Hello, and welcome to this Learn English Elementary recording brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Hello again, listeners, and welcome back to the Learn English Elementary podcast. This is number seven in series two. My name's Ravi, and my name's Tess. We're your presenters with lots of interesting things for you to listen to today. But first of all, listeners, I have to tell you, Ravi is sitting here with a very long face. You look really upset, Ravi. Do you want to tell the listeners what's up? Tess is just teasing me because I don't like the weather today. Ravi has been complaining since he arrived at the studio. Well, I know, but really, Tess, I've had an awful journey here.、Oh. It's okay for you because you come in the car, but I come on the underground, and it is just awful when it's raining. I got wet walking to the station, and then everybody was on the train with their wet coats and wet umbrellas. I hate it. Oh come on! You can't complain about a little bit of rain. Honestly, you complain when it's too hot. You complain when it's too cold. I don't complain that much. Yeah. Well, I do a bit, but. Honestly, my trousers are wet, and I've got to wear them all day, and my feet are wet, so now they're freezing cold.、Aww. I only bought these shoes last week, and now look at them, ruined. I look ridiculous. You're such a fashion victim, Ravi. It's a podcast. No one can see your shoes. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I wouldn't, and I'm cold now. I'd rather be cold and dry than cold and wet. Well, it's bad news for you then. The weather forecast says it's going to be like this for the next week. Really?、Mm -hmm. Nightmare. You know, I don't mind rain when I'm at home. I quite like seeing it out of the window. But when I have to go to work, no. Anyway, that journey was really stressful, but I feel better now. Seeing you always cheers me up, Tess. Ah. Shall we get on with it? What have we got today? Well, there's Rita talking about Bath. The bath. Bath, the city. Ah, okay. And there's Daryl for the quiz. The your turn today is a big one. What's the biggest problem facing humanity today, and why? And there's Carolina too. Don't forget my joke. I wish I could. I know you enjoy them, really.、Uh... Hey, Tess. A horse goes into a bar and says, "An orange juice, please." And the barman says, "Certainly, sir." But why the long face? Ha! Get it? Long face is a horse. Is that it? Is that the joke? Oh no! You just wait for the big one. Shall we move on to? I'd like to talk about. Okay. I'd like to talk about listeners. Is the part of the podcast when someone tells us about something,、um, something that they're interested in, or something that's important to them—a person, a place, a hobby, anything really? Yes, absolutely anything. And today we've got Rita with us in the studio. Rita's twenty-one years old. That's right, isn't it, Rita? Yeah, that's right. And what do you do? I've got a shop, a small shop. I sell second-hand clothes. You know, old clothes, mostly from the 1940s and 50s. Great! I love the dress you're wearing. Is that from your shop? Yeah, this is a dress from the 50s, 1956 to be exact. I love it. It's beautiful. I love the colour. Yeah, it's lovely. Thank you. And you're going to talk to us about Bath, right? That's right. It's my hometown. Cool. It's a great place. Yeah. Um. I was born in Bath, and I don't know. I've never wanted to live anywhere else. Remember, we've got listeners from all over the world. Perhaps it's a good idea to explain where Bath is. Yes, of course. Bath is in the southwest of England, about a hundred miles from London, I guess. A couple of hours on the train. It's near Bristol. That's the biggest city in the southwest. Bath is a city. But it's quite small. I think the population's about—I、um, don't know—about ninety thousand people, probably. Okay, good. 
And I guess you think it's a great place to live. <laughs> it's a fantastic place to live. <laughs> great restaurants, theatres, shops, lovely old pubs, beautiful buildings, music festivals and a fantastic nightlife. But it's quite quiet at the same time, if you know what I mean. Mm. It's a safe city and the countryside around is beautiful. Lots of great places to go at the weekend. Tell us a bit about the history. Well, I don't know a lot, but it was a Roman city um, about 2,000 years ago. The Romans liked it because of the hot springs, hot water that comes up from the ground. Mm. It's the only place in Britain with hot springs. Mm. The city is actually built on top of an old volcano. Not active, of course. <laughs> so they built baths there, you know, public baths using the hot water. That's where the name bath comes from, of course. The Roman baths are still there. You can visit them. You can't swim, but you can drink the water. Drink it? Yes, drink it. It's good for you. It's got loads of minerals and stuff in it. What does it taste like? Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then in the 18th century, Bath became really popular. People went there for holidays. And then later, Jane Austen wrote about it. She lived there for a while. If you've ever read any Jane Austen? Oh, yeah. Pride and Prejudice is one of my favourite books. <laughs> It's interesting, as I said. The Romans built Bath, so there's loads of Roman houses and stuff all under the city. Wow. But the archaeologists can't really explore it because they don't want to destroy the beautiful 18th century buildings on the top. Mm. It's a World Heritage Site, and I think it's the most beautiful city in Britain. I love it. I even love the tourists. <laughs> we get loads of tourists, and, you know, it makes me feel proud. I live in a city that people come miles and miles to see. Well, is there anything you don't like about Bath? No. Well, I suppose the only thing is that it's really, really difficult to park in the centre and the traffic can be terrible. But that really isn't the end of the world, is it? Certainly not. Thanks, Rita. You've made me want to go to Bath again. I haven't been there for years. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Rita. Thank you. I enjoyed talking about it. What about it then, Tess? A weekend away together in Bath? Hmm. Let me think about it. That was a really good idea for I'd like to talk about, wasn't it? It would be really interesting to hear about other people's hometowns. If you're listening and you want to write or record on audio or video something about your hometown, you can send it to us at britishcouncil.org. That's Learn English Podcast, all one word, at britishcouncil, all one word, dot org. That's O-R-G. If we like it, we'll put it up on the site. Can we put some pictures of Bath up too? Definitely. Will you do that? OK. I'm going to have to teach you how to do it, Ravi. I know. Right, speaking of computers, it's time for the quiz. We've got Daryl waiting to play. Hello, Daryl. Hello, Ravi. Where are you today, Daryl? I'm in Skipton, in North Yorkshire. Oh, I know it. I've got an uncle who lives in Skipton. Is it raining there as much as it is here today? It's pretty wet, yeah, but I don't mind the rain. I'm going to go for a walk later with my dogs. Lucky you. Are you not working today? Not today, no. What do you do? I work at a golf course. I'm a groundsman. OK. So what does a groundsman do? We look after the golf course, make sure the grass is OK and all of that. It's like being a gardener. I see. Do you know anything about computers? Uh. Ravi, you're not supposed to tell people what the quiz is about before we start. That's the second time you've said it. Oops. Well, let's get on with it. We're going to play Hot Seat, Daryl. I've got these cards with some words on them, and I'm going to give them to Tess, and she has to explain the words to you, and you have to guess what the words are, OK? OK. And all the words are on the same topic. And I think we all know what that is, Ravi. And the topic today is computers and computing. Computers 
and computing. You've got one minute starting from now. OK. This one is the thing you hold to move around the screen. Um, small thing. It's an animal as well. Mouse. Yes. Next one. Um, the thing you type on. Oh, keyboard. Yes. Well done. Oh, gosh. Uh, the thing with the picture on it. Um, the screen. Monitor. Yes. Um, this is something on the computer that does something. Uh, sorry, that's a terrible clue. Um, you have these on your computer and they make it do things. Um, you might have one for editing photos, one for sending email, um... I don't know. Uh, you have them on TV too. Oh, program. Okay, right. Okay, the computer and the monitor and everything are all, um... Programs and things are software, but the other things are... Hardware. That's right. Ah, OK. Um, the little thing you move around the screen. Mouse? Uh, no, you use the mouse to move it. Uh, the little arrow or whatever, you know. Oh, the... Um, I know it. Oh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, cursor. Right. Oh, this one's a bad thing. You don't want your computer to get one of these. It makes everything go... A Trojan? A virus? A virus, yes. Um... <laughs> Time's up. Oh. Well done, you two. <laughs> How many was that? Hang on. Mouse, keyboard, monitor, program, hardware, cursor, virus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well done, Daryl. Sorry, I wasn't very good at that. That's OK, Tess. Thank you. OK, Daryl, thanks for playing. We'll send you some bits and pieces. Enjoy your walk. Thanks, Ravi. <laughs> Bye. 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 OK, still to come, we've got your turn and we've got Carolina. And the joke. And the joke. After this. Your turn is the part of the podcast when we ask people what they think about a topic. Sometimes serious, sometimes not so serious. It's quite a serious one today because we asked people, what's the biggest problem facing humanity today? And why? So let's hear what they said. I think the biggest problem facing humanity today is selfishness. Um, everybody sits around and talks about environmental issues and problems, but very few people as individuals are actually prepared to give up uh, their cars or their way of life to do anything about it. I think the biggest problem is the, the divide between the Western world and those of us that have have money, have wealth, have resources, and the poor people that don't have enough to live, and they're starving, and they have drink dirty water and, and things like that. I think we should spread the wealth more. I think the biggest problem facing humanity today is that people don't listen to each other and they don't get to know each other and to understand each other's opinions. All the people that I have met from all the different countries I've been to all want more or less the same things. They want to be happy and healthy and to be able to look after their families and get a good education for their children. And I think that war and uh, political problems and disagreements are all because we don't listen to each other and we don't try to understand each other. The biggest problem facing humanity today is climate change. It's a massive problem because I don't think people understand the effects completely and therefore will not act. That's such a big question. Um, probably the biggest thing for our futures, I think, is the environment and protecting what we have. Um, I think that uh, everybody needs to look around them and see what they can do on a very small scale to stop wasting things and to try and protect the nature we have around us before it's too late. Interesting answers. 
I agree with the people who talked about climate change. I think that's the biggest problem today. What about you, listeners? Write in and tell us what you think. But now it's time to find out what's happening to Carolina. Carolina is from Venezuela, and she's studying at Newcastle University in Britain. Yes. If you listen to the first series, you'll remember that Carolina and her boyfriend Jamie are members of a society at the university, the Conservation Society. Jamie's the society president, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. He's really into saving the environment. We should have asked him what he thought in your turn. Last time, when Carolina was at the hairdressers, remember, she said she was a bit worried about Jamie. Things weren't going very well between them. What do you think's happening?、Hmm, I don't know. Let's see what happens this time. Carolina and Jamie are going on a conservation society weekend away together. I can't imagine what they do on conservation society trips. Well, let's listen and find out, Ravi. Okay. Good morning, Henry. What a nice car! Hi, Carolina. Thanks. Right, in you get.、Oh. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Move over, Layla. Make room for Carolina. I'll stay in the middle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina, this is Layla. Hi. Hello. And that's lucky old Ivan in the front. He's got long legs. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Ivan. <laughs> right, let's get going. Have you got the map, Ivan? Yep. Right, here we go. Put some music on, Ivan. There are some CDs in the glove box. Have a route around. I can't wait to see the black grouse. The black grouse, the whiskey, with a bird on the front. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> called famous grouse. Oh, the black grouse is a bird, but it's black. Yeah. The black grouse is disappearing in England. There aren't very many of them left. That's what they're trying to do at the nature reserve: save the black grouse. But what exactly are we going to do? Plant hedges. Hedges. Hedges are the lines of plants and trees that divide the fields. You know, you can have wooden or metal fences, or you can have hedges. Ah. And the black grouse prefers hedges. So we're going to take away some of the old fences and plant new hedges. Yeah, it's really cool. We went there last year, didn't we, Jamie?、Mm. Had a great time. Oh. Ivan, there's a sign saying Brampton two miles. Don't we need to turn left before Brampton? Um, yeah. Um, just a minute. Um, I'm not quite sure where we are.、Oh. Have we passed Denton? Ages ago, Ivan, you've got the map upside down. It isn't upside down. I've just turned it round a bit. <laughs> I can't follow a map if I don't turn it round.、Uh, why don't we stop and ask someone? Look, there's a petrol station. Pull over. You ask Carolina. You're next to the window. Ask for Hall Bank Gate. Oh. Um, excuse me. Uh huh. Can you tell us the way to Holbank Gate, please? Holbank Gate,、yes. you're miles away. Oh, yes, but are we on the right road? Uh, no, it's not this road. So, which road should we take? Uh, go back the way you came, about five miles, then take a right. Follow the signs to Milton. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, I'm hungry.、Mm. Me too. Me too. Where did you put the sandwiches, Henry? They're in the plastic bag, in the back somewhere. Oh. Oh, Henry. This is a bag of rubbish. What? This bag is full of rubbish. Oh. Don't tell me. You put the bag of sandwiches in the rubbish, and put the bag of rubbish in the car. Oh no! Oh. oh well, I'm sorry. 
It's an easy mistake to make. Are we nearly there, Henry? Ivan? Well, I'm not quite sure where we are, to be honest. If we're on this road, here, look, oh. this yellow one, well, we should be there by now. Oh, I don't Ivan. believe it. Come on. Not again. Stop and ask someone, Henry. Excuse me. Oh, yes? We're trying to get to Hallbank Gate. Is this the right way? Hallbank Gate? No, dear. This is the road to Farlam. Hallbank Gate's in the other direction. Oh, oh no. How far is it? <laughs> Not far. Go back the way you came for about two miles, then turn right. OK. There's a pub on the corner called the Old Duke. Uh huh. Then go straight on till you come to the main road, then turn right again. Mm -hmm. You'll see the sign to Hallbank Gate. You can't miss it. Thank you very much. <sighs> well, it won't be long now. Mm. I just hope the black grouse appreciates what we're doing for it. That's all I can say. Mm. Oh dear, not a very good start to the Conservation Society weekend away. I hope they find it. Mm, what a nightmare. <laughs> it's funny though. Imagine throwing away the sandwiches and bringing a bag of rubbish instead. <laughs> I hate asking for directions though. Men always hate asking for directions. Mm. Anyway, we'll have to wait for next time to find out how the rest of the weekend goes. Hope things get better. Yeah. OK, I'm going to tell my joke. Then, I think that's it for today. Come on then, let's hear it. Right. There's this baby polar bear sitting on an iceberg with his mum. Oh, I love polar bears. <sighs> anyway, the baby polar bear says to his mum, Mum, are you sure I'm a polar bear? <laughs> so his mum says, Yes, darling, of course you are. And then, Mum... Are you sure I'm not a brown bear? <laughs> no, dear, you're not a brown bear. Well, what about a black bear, then? Maybe I'm a black bear. No, dear, you're not a black bear, either. Look at your fur. It's white. <laughs> well, what about a grizzly bear, Mum? Perhaps I'm a grizzly bear, then. No, dear, you're not a grizzly bear. Look, your dad's a polar bear, I'm a polar bear, your sister's a polar bear, of course you're a polar bear. Mum, but am I a real polar bear? Aww. Look, I keep telling you, you're a polar bear. We're all polar bears. We all live here together in the snow. Why do you keep on asking these stupid questions? Mum... I'm freezing! <laughs> oh, polar bears are so cute. Did you see that programme about them? Yeah, they are cool, aren't they? Yeah. Right, everyone. That's all we've got time for, but Tom the teacher will be here in a moment, so don't go away. Remember that you can write to us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! You are listening to a Learn English Elementary recording, brought to you by the British Council. To find out more, and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learnenglish. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm here at the end of every podcast to talk about some of the language you heard in the programme, and to talk about ways to help you learn English. Today, I want to talk about the phrase, I'd rather. At the beginning of the podcast, Ravi is unhappy because it's raining and his shoes are wet. Listen to what Tess says to him. Listen for, I'd rather. What does it mean? You're such a fashion victim, Ravi. It's a podcast. No one can see your shoes. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. 
I'd rather means the same as I prefer. Tess is saying that rain is better than cold. She prefers rainy weather to cold weather. She says, "I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold." I'd rather. Can you hear the D? I'd rather. The D is a contraction of would. Instead of "I would," we say "I'd." Listen again to Tess and Ravi. Listen for "I'd," and then listen for "would." You're such a fashion victim, Ravi. It's a podcast. No one can see your shoes. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I wouldn't, and I'm cold now. I'd rather be cold and dry than cold and wet. Did you hear it? Tess said, "I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold," and Ravi disagreed with her and said. I wouldn't. Now I want you to listen to Tess and Ravi one more time, but this time, I want you to notice the form of the verb that comes after "I'd rather." Is it the infinitive or the ing form? Listen. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I wouldn't, and I'm cold now. I'd rather be cold and dry than cold and wet. Yes, I'd rather is always followed by a verb, and it's always the infinitive form of the verb, but without to. I'd rather have rain, and I'd rather be cold. I'd rather is a more complicated phrase than I prefer, isn't it? But you know, as a learner. It isn't always a good idea to worry about all of the separate words in a phrase. What does rather mean? Why is it the verb without to? Why is it would? Well, sometimes it's better to learn things as a phrase and not worry about all of the questions. Make a note of the phrase and a note of what it means and how to use it in a sentence. So for. I'd rather you could write. I'd rather means the same as I prefer, but it is used differently. It always has a verb after it, and the verb is the infinitive without to. Then you can write some examples. Maybe, I'd rather have rain than cold. I'd rather stay up late than go to bed early. I'd rather eat fish than meat. And add more examples every time you see or hear the new phrase. Now that you know the phrase, you'll hear it a lot in the English that you read and listen to this week. Make a list of all the examples that you find. Now for something different. At the beginning of the quiz, Tess was a bit angry with Ravi because he told Daryl what the quiz was going to be about: computers. Listen to what Ravi says after Tess is angry with him. I see. Do you know anything about computers?、Uh... Ravi, you're not supposed to tell people what the quiz is about before we start. That's the second time you've said it. Oops. Well, let's get on with it. Did you hear it? Oops. Ravi didn't intend to say the word computers. He didn't want to say it. He made a mistake, so he said, "Oops." This word is very, very common in English. It means, "Oh dear, what a silly thing to do." Oops is informal. We only use it with people that we know well. We use "oops" when we make a mistake or when we have a small accident, when we drop something, for example. We can use "oops" when we're sorry we did something, or when we're not sorry at all, like Ravi. We also use it in informal emails. If you send someone an email but you forget to attach the document that you wanted them to see—that's something that I do all the time—you can send another email just saying "oops" with the document that you wanted to send. 
everyone will understand what oops means. Silly me, I forgot to attach the document the first time. Now let's look at another very common word in English. About. You will hear the word about all the time, because we use it in lots of different ways. Listen to Tess asking Rita about her home city, Bath. Tell us a bit about the history. Yes, Tess uses about as a preposition. We tell people about something, or we talk about something. Now listen to Rita's answer. She uses about, but not in the same way. Listen. Tell us a bit about the history. Well, I don't know a lot, but it was a Roman city、um, about two thousand years ago. Rita doesn't know exactly when Bath was a Roman city, but she has an idea. She knows it was more or less two thousand years ago. So she says, "About two thousand years ago." In this situation, about means more or less or approximately. Listen to another example. Rita isn't sure exactly how far Bath is from London, and she isn't sure what the population is either. Can you guess what she says? Listen. Bath is in the southwest of England, about a hundred miles from London, I guess. A couple of hours on the train. It's near Bristol. That's the biggest city in the southwest. Bath is a city, but it's quite small. I think the population's about—I、um, don't know—about ninety thousand people, probably. Did you hear the abouts? She says Bath is about a hundred miles from London. And she says the population is about ninety thousand people, probably, because she isn't sure. About is a very useful word. People use it a lot when they're giving directions. Remember Carolina and her friends on the way to the nature reserve? They got lost and had to ask for directions. Listen. So, which road should we take? Uh, go back the way you came, about five miles, then take a right. Follow the signs to Milton. The man says, "Go back the way you came, about five miles, then take a right." Why don't you try and use "about" to mean more or less this week? Okay, I think that's enough for this week, so I'll stop now. I'll talk to you all again next time. Remember, you can write to me about any language that you noticed in this podcast. The address is learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil dot org. In a moment, you'll hear the address for the website where you can read everything you've heard in this podcast. You can also find some practice exercises to do online, and a support pack that you can print. Right, that's all for this time. Bye for now. See you next time. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. If you enjoyed this elementary podcast, you might like to listen to previous episodes. You can also listen to our other Learn English podcasts, such as themes, stories and poems, and professional English. You can access these on our website at www. dot britishcouncil. dot org forward slash Learn English.